I'm going to need a few volunteers for this. So if you want to volunteer, you can pull out your phone and go to a browser, uh, www.graphql.fun. But there are a couple caveats about this. One, I'm not doing anything with your data. This app, we're not even saving anything in memory. We're going to blast it out of here uh, after this. The second caveat is I'm going to actually get a couple, of you, a couple of you to come up here on stage. So if you're not supposed to be at GraphQL Summit today, you might want to reconsider volunteering. We're going to see your face up here, and you'll be here. You know, if you told people you were going surfing and then they found you at a tech conference, um, they would call you a liar. The other thing is, is I know that we're live streaming, so just bear that in mind. If you volunteer as a live stream uh, participant, we're going to call you up on stage, and then that will be really embarrassing. But let's go ahead and get started. These are GraphQL subscriptions. My name is Alex Banks, but my Twitter handle is Moon Tahoe. Let me go ahead and get another field here. So, okay, that makes sense, right? I live in Tahoe City. One day it was like, you need a Twitter account. And the moon was out, so I came up with Moon Tahoe. Um, <clears throat> there's a little more to this story, though. In order to really understand why my Twitter handle is Moon Tahoe, we got to go back in time. We have to go back to 2008. 2008 was the year. Uh, 2008 was the year that I got Guitar Hero. <laughs> so this is what I was doing in 2008. But meanwhile, somewhere else out there in the world, there was another Alex Banks, and they were plotting to become the Alex Banks. So on October of 2008, they set their plans into motion, joined Twitter, got that name, Alex Banks. But then they got busy, life got in the way, kids, commutes. They never really followed through with their plan to be the Alex Banks. So that's why I'm Moon Tahoe. But I know there's some people from Twitter here today, possibly. So what I want to do is prove that I'm ready to be the Alex Banks. <laughs> and one of the reasons that I know I'm ready is I'm responsible. I founded a company with my wife, a serious place of business. At Moon Highway, we're busy training engineers to become better engineers. And I also uh, write books for O'Reilly. No, not that O'Reilly. Not those books, these books. These books are about killing. These books are about learning. See, at Moon Highway, we believe that learning is better than killing. <laughs> but we also believe that you can kill it at learning. So we got you covered. We have a React classes, Node.js classes available for you on LinkedIn Learning. Uh, we have Apollo and GraphQL classes on Egghead.io. There's even a playlist about Apollo Federation out there now. And in addition to writing old books like Learning React, we're writing brand new books like Learning React. <laughs> so the first chapter, the first six chapters of this book uh, is already available to you. Uh, on Safari Online if you want to read the early release chapters. But today we are here for a game show. Use subscription, the GraphQL game show. Now you might be asking yourself, why are we at a game show? 
And the reason is I really only wanted to make one talk this year, but I wanted to be able to submit it to both game show conferences and tech conferences. So there's going to be a little bit of information here for both. Like, what is a game show? Well, a game show has three important parts. First, there's a charming and charismatic host. <laughs> Second, game shows have players. And then third, game shows have prizes. So a host, players, and prizes. Those are the things that make up a game show. Now for the tech part. So what is GraphQL? Now let me see by a show of hands, how many of you have heard of GraphQL? Everybody? Everybody here has heard of GraphQL? Oh, you guys know all this? Um. Oh, sweet. OK. <laughs> I got you covered. I have a whole presentation for when everybody's already heard of GraphQL. What we're going to do is just check it out and you know what, we don't need slides. <laughs> Let's just forget about the slides. We'll go into the playground, right? We all know about this. We've all seen the playground. Did you know that you can use GraphQL in the playground to solve some of the world's most unanswered questions, like who let the dogs out? So right here, <laughs> we're going to figure it out with this audience. What we're looking at is GraphQL subscriptions. So I sent a mutation. That mutation started a question. That question blasted um, a different screen to everybody's phone who's volunteering. As you guys decide who let the dogs out, that information is coming back to my API, and then it's being pushed out to this screen here that we see. So these are GraphQL subscriptions at work. And what I want to do is I want to show you why I named this game show Use Subscription. So I have a Create React app already set up here. And this probably looks a little bit familiar to you, right? Just the basic React boilerplate. On line four, there might be something a little different if you haven't used uh, Apollo React hooks. We're pulling in the provider from Apollo React hooks. And notice that we're wrapping our whole app with this provider and then providing the client and scope. Subscriptions are ready for you to use on the server. As soon as you set up an Apollo server, you have subscription support out of the box. However, it doesn't come supported on the client out of the box because most people aren't using subscriptions. So we don't want to send all of that extra weight down with their bundle when they're not even going to use the feature. So there's a little bit of a setup that we have to go through to make subscriptions work on the client. And let's see here. What we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and code. Now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, live code this, but I don't want you guys to worry about me. I'm OK with live coding. I come from a long family of live coders. My father was a live coder. <laughs> His father was a live coder. His father. My great grandfather. He owned a pool hall. He wasn't a live coder. So, oh, looks like I'm about finished live coding here. All right. So, let's go ahead and see what we have here. So, one, you'll notice that we have a lot of imports. And I want to talk about why we're using those imports. On line 10, we're setting up an in memory cache. That's pretty standard business. And then, if you look over here, let me zoom out just a little bit. On line 11, we are creating an HTTP link. The reason that we create an HTTP link is we're still going to send mutations and queries over HTTP. So if you're going to send a query or a mutation, that's going to be an HTTP request. However, subscriptions work over WebSockets. So when you introduce a subscription, you're introducing a connection. I have an open connection between my API and all of your phones, and I'm able to push data through that connection. So that's why we say on line 13, reconnect true. Because as we know, connections don't always stay up. Sometimes connections drop, and you got to call the person back. So that's essentially what's going on here. If the connection gets dropped, we're going to automatically re reconnect. Now, using the subscription client, I've created a um, WebSocket link. And what we have to do here on line 16 is we have to decide what to use. Are we going to use WebSockets, or are we going to use HTTP? And we do that with this split function. The split function takes in three arguments. The first argument is a special type of function referred to as a predicate. A predicate is a function that only returns true or false. But whether that function returns true or false affects which link we're going to use. This predicate is checking to see if the operation is a subscription. 
If it is a subscription, it's going to return true, and we're going to use the WS link on line 21 or the second argument, whatever we put into the second argument of the split function. If this returns false, we're going to use the HTTP link, because that means it's not a subscription. It's a query or it's a mutation. Look at this. Here we have a hook. So you've noticed the word use is used quite a bit with hooks. And that's because components are users of hooks. So that's who's going to use this hook. The whole idea behind hooks is as their state changes, they cause components to re-render. So we have two hooks here, right? One hook is on line 26. That's the use state hook. I'm assuming that hook was written by Dan Abramoff. The hook on line 25 is the use connection status hook. I wrote that hook. So you're looking at hooks on this screen that both myself and Dan Abramoff have written. On line 26, we have a use state, and we're going to start off with the status uh, being connected. So that sets the status variable to connecting, because when we start out, we should be connecting to that subscription. The WS client, when it's connecting, when we're connected, when we're reconnecting, that's going to change the state. And I change the state by calling set status, which will change this status variable which will re-render my component with the new status, and I can indicate status on the screen. Let me show you what I'm talking about. First, let's go ahead and, uh, let me see. Oh, my shortcut keys, npm start. All right, All right and. <laughs> Seems like my shortcut keys have just stopped working for Okay, good. So let me go into this app. So the first thing I want to do is use that hook that we just saw there. So I'm going to go ahead and import use connection status um, from the client. Now, you'd probably put something like that in a better place, like in a folder called hooks or something like that. But for brevity, I just put everything right in the same file. So we're going to go ahead and check this by saying const, oops status equals use connection status. And what I can do is I can take this status variable now and display it. So let's go ahead and save this. And let's see what we got. Oh, we're connecting and we're connected. So you probably saw that flicker really quickly. We had a connecting status. If we disconnect, we're able to see that too. It's always a good idea to display or indicate your connection status to users. It doesn't have to be you know, our Times New Roman connected word as the header of the page. It could be like a really uh, subtle indicator in the corner or something like that, but it will always let us know whether we have an open connection or not. What I want to do is use some other hooks here. There's some other hooks that we can use. Whenever you see that little keyword use, that means that there's a hook, and there's probably a component that wants to use it. So I'm going to use the use query hook. And that hook comes from at Apollo React hooks. All right, and what we can do with the use query hook is we can actually add a query to our component. So I'm going to import our little GQL function and create a query. Oh, oh, all right. Okay, and what I like to do, the best part about GraphQL, right, is we don't have to just go coding everything and debugging it in our screen right away. Let's make sure our query works first. So I'm going to come over here, and I created this schema, right? So I call it a callout when I send something to all of your phones so that we can do something fun. And this particular callout is called an audience poll. So whenever we have an audience poll, I want to see the results. That will contain the question, the yes label, the no label, and the yes and no values. So as I hit play on that, we can see that we're answering who let the dogs out, and it is a dead lock tie on who for 36. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. I'll copy my query, and I'm going to go ahead and paste it into here. And now we can use it with the use query hook. So I'm going to come down here, and I get to destructure my loading, and my data equals, whoa, not minus, equals use query. And we're going to send that query to this hook. All right, and the first thing we always like to do is if we're loading, we need to indicate that to the user. I don't like the term loading. I kind of think, I kind of think the term loading is like for us, it's like a software engineering term, like things are loading. What's actually happening with our app is it's turning up. 
So I want to indicate to the users um, a little bit something more real. So as you can see, our app was turning up there. And this is my favorite thing to do because I'm not the best designer. So if I could, I would just get all of the data and put it out here in one of these pre-components. JSON stringify data null two. There we go, we can save that. And we're able to see our data on the screen. So there's our query working. The problem with the query is we pulled that request. We sent the query and we got the information. So if you're pressing the buttons on your phone now, I don't get to see anything change, right? So what we're gonna need to do is enhance this page with one more hook. And that's where the game show gets this title from. We're gonna be using the use subscription hook. So there's use subscription. And what I'm gonna do is I know that my subscriptions are in the sh same shape as my queries, so I'm just gonna copy that query and call it a subscription. And then change the operation name to subscription. And now that I have that, I can do the use subscription hook. So we'll go ahead and say const data. We already used the term data, so I have to come up with something else. I'm gonna call this push data. And that equals use subscription. There we go. So now I want to see if it's available, my push data. But this data won't be available until something's pushed. So if it's null, I just want to be able to see the data. So the first time we pull the results, and then as the answers change, we can see the answers changing on the screen. So that's, that's hooks in a nutshell, and that's the use subscription hook. Now we're not going to go anywhere yet, because I like to finish things. So we're going to go ahead and finish this component before moving on. Um, I can import a pie chart from React minimal pie chart. And we can go ahead and use this to display the data. So I'm gonna come down here to the screen. Um, I'll go ahead and put my status in a paragraph tag. I, I built websites in the 90s, so we love paragraph tags and table borders. Um, let's see here, all right, heading one, we'll put the question out there, right? And then instead of using this pre, what I want to do is I'm going to say, what is that, the pie chart component? Okay, pie chart radius equals 30. That number has been pretested. Um, and data, I'm gonna get a little array of values. So uh, the first value will be yes, and we will make the color for yes red. And then the soaps, wrong punctuation. And then we'll go ahead and take the next value and no, and the color for that value will be blue. I might have had those backwards. Um, okay, so the other thing is I gotta get those values. I gotta destructure the yes and everything from all of that good stuff. So I'm gonna just go ahead and say const question yes and no is gonna be equal to hmm. The data or the push data? Well, if we have push data, then we want it to be equal to the push data. And it looks like dot callout dot results. Otherwise, we want to go ahead and use the data dot callout dot results. All right, so as we go ahead and save that, there we go. Wait a second, we need to test this with a different question. So let's go ahead and see. The roof is on fire. What are you gonna do? Are you gonna get water or let it burn? All right. I think I have this backwards. I think you're letting it burn and this is telling you to get water. Because <laughs> it's a good idea to do that. All right, so that's, the, that's use subscription in a nutshell. Those are subscriptions, queries, they're push, pull requests. Now let's go ahead and continue this game show by playing a game. So I'm gonna go ahead and end this. And we will, oops, first, hang on. Uh, uh, um, I'm missing something that I want for this game show, so let me just get it real quick. <laughs> we got 10 hours of this, so stay tuned. Oh. Where others see destruction. I thought we were. I we thought we were done with hope. this. Okay. That's right. All right. 
Peggy raises. Come on down. You're on the perfect right. Bring your phones with you to get caught up. Yeah. Uh, no. He <laughs> gets. Come on down. If this is you, bring your phone and come on up. There, every one of our contestants today is going to get the Moon Highway prize back. Woo! Is he here? Oh, is this an online one? All right, going once, going twice. We're going to put you back. All right, we're going to pick another player then. Let's see. How about Bob? Is Bob here? Yeah, come on Woo! down! You're the next contestant on the Purpose Rights. All right, let's. Yag, lag, Gary? I'm not that great at reading. We're, all, <laughs> we're here? You're here? All right. You are the next contestant on the purpose right. Let's go ahead and pick one more player. All right, Dougie, you here? You are our final contestant on the purpose right. Is this one coming up? Oh, yeah, we got it. Yay! Welcome to the purpose right. All right. Don't enter any values yet into your phone, but you're gonna get to take a guess. Ah, this is some of this. This is some of this great UI work that I was talking about earlier. Uh, all right. Oh yeah, maybe we should stop this music too, because it will go on for ten hours. <laughs> and then I think I have a microphone somewhere up here. Did it fall on the floor? Oh yeah, it fell on the floor. Great. Check. Check. All right, All Peggy, right. our first contestant on the purpose right. Now, Peggy, <laughs> I hear that you have a very interesting hobby. Would you like to tell our audience about it? I actually was a DJ in college. Oh. oh. <laughs> Peggy was a DJ in college. Well, Peggy, are you ready to play the purpose right? I am. Let's do it. Okay, so here's how the game works. Everybody's going to send a mutation from their phone, and that mutation from their phone is going to be pushed back to their phone as a subscription. We're going to take the average of all four players' uh, performance, and that's going to be the number. The player who guesses that time in milliseconds the closest will be our winner. So if we're ready, we're going to start with Peggy's guess. Peggy, you can ask the audience. Now remember, one second is 1,000 milliseconds. Okay. So how many milliseconds do you think it will take the subscription to get pushed back to your phone? Hmm. Anyone have any guesses? Hundred? Yeah, I was gonna say hundred too. Hundred? I like a hundred. Come on, studio audience, help her out. What yeah, should help she me guess? Out. What do you think? Ninety, seventy. I'm gonna go with the hundred. All right, like go ahead and enter like your guess when you're ready. All right, Got great. It. Thank you, Peggy. Yeah, of course. Hello, Bobby. How's it going? Welcome to the Purpose Right. Now, is there anybody at home that you'd like to say hi to today? <laughs> Hi, Barry. <laughs> Hi, Barry. <laughs> All right, Bobby. Let's hear it. What's going to be your guess? Does everybody want to help Bobby out with a guess here for how many milliseconds it's going to take this subscription to be pushed back? I think in true Price is Right fashion, I'll do 101. All right. Yeah. <laughs> 101. All right. Great. Great guess. Hello, and your name is? Gary. Gary. Hi, Gary. Welcome to The Perf is Right. Now, Gary, you have a very interesting career. Would you like to tell the audience about your career? I'm a software developer. Oh. Gary is a software developer. He <laughs> makes all of our phones work. Uh, <laughs> all, right. all right, Gary, what would be your guess for Perf is Right here? I don't know. I think I'm going to go low. 50? 50? All right, good. 50. Woo, that's real fast. We are probably on conference Wi-Fi and 4G. And that's really a measurement of the network, right? So, <laughs> all right. Hello, Doug. Welcome to The Perf is Right. Doug, is there anybody at home you'd like to say hi to today? I don't know. My dad. I don't know. <laughs> Hello, Doug's dad. <laughs> all right, Doug, what's your guess? I guess I'll go one millisecond. One millisecond. <laughs> oh, wow. Yes, that's so what we... <laughs> that's exactly how fast we want everything to be is one millisecond. Okay. So go ahead, did everybody put their answers in? Doug, did you throw your one millisecond in? All right, so there's everybody's guesses. Do we want to see the answer? So let's see, I have a winner. And it looks like it was Bobby with 101 Woo! milliseconds. Woo! 
So the average was actually 258 milliseconds, which isn't bad considering we're using conference Wi-Fi or 4G. So the whole point of using subscriptions is you do so when you want real-time interaction. Now we're going to send each of our contestants away with the Moon Highway prize pack, which is <laughs> another one of these books. <laughs> I know. I know you have like 20. <laughs> I'm pretty sure other people have one. You can give them away if you like. There's some stickers in there. Thank you all for playing The Perp is Right. Can we get a big round of applause for our contestants? Woo! All right, so we have just a couple minutes left, and I'm going to go over just one last thing. Um, I want to take a look, since we have the time, at what subscriptions look like on the server. So when I said that the Apollo server um, is ready to use subscriptions, it's ready to use subscriptions. That means that all you really have to do is say new Apollo server, send it the type depths and the resolvers, and you have subscription support. So then what you have to do, like anything in GraphQL, you have to add a subscription to your schema. And then you have to go add the resolvers. We always work with the schema, and then we go work with the resolvers, and back and forth. So this one is just basically an alert system. We have a message. The mutation will send an alert. And then the subscription is going to listen for alerts. Notice that the subscription resolver is a little bit different. It's not a direct function. It's an object. And then within that object, um, we have a function for subscribe. So that's when we connect to the subscription. We're going to take all of your connections um, and put them in an array. So what happens is, is when we call pub sub publish new alert, this data payload right here is going to be pushed asynchronously to every one of the connections that are subscribed. When you unsubscribe or stop, you're not going to be in that connections list. So for general subscription use, we're blasting subscriptions out to every single connection. The pub sub object you'll notice comes with Apollo server, but that's sort of just a toy one. That pub sub uses the Node.js event emitter, which means it's going to run in your single instance. And if you start to scale your site horizontally or anything else, the pub sub will not work across instances. So when you want to start to wire up bigger, badder, faster, stronger subscriptions, you're going to need to use some sort of a messaging layer or a bus. So you can use Redis, RabbitMQ, Kafka. You can even build your own messaging layer or a bus. So just really quickly, this is the bus that these subscriptions are working on is just PubSub. And the, I mean, it's just Redis. So the process of using subscriptions is setting up Redis to be my PubSub, and then the interface for publishing subscriptions is exactly the same. So I just wanted to take a quick second to show you what the server side of that looks up. I do have one more mutation that I would like to run today. And that mutation is thank you. I'm Alex Banks. Mm -hmm.